Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you big fans out there, you're going to be hoping that they have a much better performance than that train. But we're heading over to Overpass. Gambit's choice of the map as they lead 1-0. It was a bit of a, a stomp of a first map, I think it's safe to say, Dust. And yep. they just didn't look like they really showed up. No, not at all. Not that Overpass is too bad for Big, but Gambit definitely was doing some great work on Overpass. And some of the offline tournaments they were playing on really helped them along the way. I'm getting some of the big finishes they have, but again, this is a little bit of a different lineup. And some of the changes that they've made to roles, as well as bringing in a new player in Fitch. But Pistol Run is underway. Gambit looking to do something fast at B, but Leggy, a great pop flash to kind of deter that monster push. Give Tatsun a chance to find an angle. The B attack is still on the way, however, as we do have several gathered up at Monster with the bomb. Yeah, it's still coming a little bit late. Anticipated and Tabson gets flashed out, kicked off afterwards. Leggy with a solid USP headshot, but a flashbang and a smoke in his eyes is going to turn in the way. And then the confrontation continues as the bomb will be planted. Picked up and close. He's going to be able to take down at least one player before Godby takes out Hobbit. Flashbangs again, being incredibly solid from Gambit. And Fitz is going to come in and clean up the rest. He continues to impress. He's been solid these last couple of days. Yeah, I mean, he's a little bit more quiet on train. He wasn't really needed. He definitely still came up when he needed to on the T side in particular to kind of finish things off. And so, yeah, he's definitely kind of fit right in. I feel like he's definitely taken a lot of entry fragger rolls away from Adren as Adren's kind of taken a bit more of a back seat on whether or not he's going to be kind of the main entry as he, you know, focuses on in-game bleeding. You still can see Adren involved in openings, but it, it, I think they just don't rely on him as much. Like they're trying to get Fitch in that spot. Like, you will see, like, a Dren, for instance, kind of occasionally playing connector now, like Zeus used to do, and trying to take up some of those spots. Slowing things down. Bomb dropped in T side of connector. Pushing up long. Only leg yet on the B side. He's playing aggressively. He's next to the short tunnel. Just feeling their way through bathrooms, making sure there isn't any big player that's laid in wait. Can get around the back of them and really start to turn the screws. Big's gonna stick with a four-man stack on A. It's gonna be a slow round, but. It seems more and more likely that it's going to be a pretty clean one by Gambit, barring some miracle play by Legia here in short. He's about to find out there's multiple players on the flashbang to make sure that he wouldn't be able to deal too much damage. Fast rotation, though, from Tabson, Key, and Bobby. But Mo's having none of it. Mo's going to allow them to get into position. Molotov calling off Tabson. He gets the backwards and it's the clean sweep. It's flawless. Gambit get it done without losing a single player. And not too much to speak about there, just kind of methodically working their way into short B. Nice pot flash to get through safely, and then just trading their way in it to B without losing anyone in the process. Even printing a little bit of money with that MAC-10 with Hobbit, they'll keep them going into this round. Obviously big still with nothing to work with. And they will again kind of open up default here on Gambit. Hobbit playing B by himself. Adrain again kind of taking up Zeus's old role in stairs. It's also a map where you see Dozia a bit more active than other maps where he's more of a passive force. As Hobbit sneaks in, the B undetected finally gets spotted. Kind of gets stranded out in open space, but still finds to kill on Legia. Just when they thought they had him. Yeah, he gets the kill all the same. Flash over one to B. Molotov will be there to greet them, but it's not going to deter their through monster. Next, getting tagged up. Not anymore, he'll be down, but Tabs has came through from the short side. Footsteps in connector. It's a for Cobby and Keith and Gambit back into winning ways. However, first true test and right around is coming right up. Indeed it is. I kind of wonder how many SMGs get held onto by Gambit. I know Adrin had the MAC-10. He's already dropped that for the AK. Hobbit will keep a UMP, however, and they will also keep a Galil on Mo. They just want to try to save as much money as they can, you know, try to save for the long term. They're not going to go straight to the op on Mo. And just keep 
the rifles in play for the most part. That's a really good incendiary. I don't think I've really seen often one get there that quickly to stop people from getting out into the fountain area. They don't really use it, though, to push fountain. They actually already kind of retreated back towards the A side as Gambit do get control of short B once more. The help of Hobbit and Adren kind of doubling up. Aggression out onto the short water. We'll see Hobbit there with 55 health left. UMP in his hands. Bit of flirtation around mid, but nothing is going to stick in Gambit about to find out that actually no one is there anymore. Yeah, at the very least, that one incendiary just caused so much stress on Gambit to have to clear everything out and wonder if they've been pushed. Which eats up so much time as well. Yep. It's a good 15, 20, 30 seconds that have been wasted now. Now they're going to start to make the rotation towards the B side. About 35 seconds left. Now both God B and Legia a lead in weight will be holding the close angle on monster right. smoke is going to eat up more time gambit have done a pretty solid job of not getting picked off but you got to say the big right now are favorites to actually take this round they've ate up so much of this time 15 seconds now just to get him on the site just takes to hold down this angle with the ump and this round could be slipping away like he's still on the site as well He's oh, Fitch. Yeah, he possibly can, but finally goes down. Tapton from upper is raining down. Okay, but so he's got. And he was a monster in the last map, but he's going to continue to apply that pressure. Keith won't even get a look in. Doesn't have Kevlar, doesn't have nades, doesn't have a kit. He is screwed. <laughs> and Fitch is going to take him down. Yeah, Fitch wasn't even really required there. He was definitely going to be the checkmate move if it was needed because he was definitely sneaking in just behind in the A bomb site. He had a great timing on that flank, but wasn't really required after the work that Adrian and Mo put in on the bomb site itself. So again, Gambit off to a roaring start. Remember, they went up, I think, 7 0 on train before a round finally came out from Big, and they're well on their way to at least 5 in this one, it appears, before Big can respond back. As we were talking about, Gambit has a tendency to do a lot of inner executes on train. They never really needed to do so because they didn't play very many T rounds. But this is definitely a map where while they do play the slow defaults, they really do love their B executes. So we've already seen several of those out in force. And I think that just kind of, again, kind of shows that this team isn't just going to lose everything that they were used to doing when Zeus was on board. Like that doesn't just go away. You don't just delete that out your mind. So they still have, you know, a playbook and a system to rely on even if there is kind of a, a new one in the book. God, being going to be having a look from a bathroom. Molotov in his face. But his teammate actually goes out anyway. He doesn't care. The Brilliant. That was a little interesting. God, being like, I'm not going out. There's a molly back. He's like, screw this, mate. I'm not afraid of fire. Work for charm, of course. Pretty reminiscent to how Drain started too. It's just been so one-sided so far. Next to the Deke. Had some pretty solid plays on Train with the Eagle, so let's hope that he pulls off something truly spectacular here. He just gets caught on the side, and Fitch has yet to die, by the way. He's 8, 3, and 0. Yeah, I mean, he has big shoes to fill all good because he's taken a lot of Adrin's entry rolls now, or a lot of the spots that Adrin would normally be entering from, and as a consistent as Adrin was, the numbers that guy would put up, I mean, he's one of the best entry fraggers in the world, so again, he's got a lot of a lot of responsibility. Adrin's still going to be there to help him out and put in the firepower, no doubt about that, but again, Fitch, I think the pressure's on him to kind of prove to, that he's worthy of being on a team that just won a major. And he's, so far, he's been up to the task. Sneaky spot from Legia, by the way. Yeah, he's been hit before. And the, the pistol. It's the kind of position that's a bit gimmicky, though. If it doesn't get checked, maybe you can get a couple sh shots in the back. But ultimately, you're normally going to get traded out after one kill. You'll sometimes see two players push the short one in that position and one just watching outside the connector as well, so they can fully focus. Didn't quite happen here, and it could cost big quite a lot, actually. One for one trade's not fantastic. 
but next getting the kill is not a second. And he may not be done just yet either. Player pushing the smoke. Nex is primed, ready to strike. Five health remains, but that's more than enough. And Keeve with the flick. So they can thank Nex for that round. It was looking a bit sketchy to start off with, but they did recover. Yeah, I mean, game is just relying on just doing like basically a simple pot flash push through monster. They have someone kind of lining up the flashbang. And then it, it pops right over the entrance and then they just roll in. And I think that Nexus has kind of made the adjustment of just kind of sitting behind the pillar, making sure he's not affected by that flash, and then being able to re peek out and put frags on the board. He was certainly a big part of that round, and that's why Big have their first one going. Oh, that Incineer doesn't quite land the stop gamut from spilling out. But he does still land a nice shot onto Fitch to take him down to 20 HP, so it's almost no harm, no foul in that regard. But that is a very tricky incendiary. I don't really see that too often. Definitely a good nade to learn for CT teams on overpass. I worry here for Big is that they've gone for such a heavy investment with the double ops mm -hmm. that if they were to lose this round, they are in such deep, deep trouble. Definitely one of those maps where double op on CT side is actually pretty rare. Yep. Both sides susceptible to having a whole bunch of smoke tossed on them, which is where this orb typically struggles the most. I keep this going to move past the smoke before it plumes and does get the rewards onto Mo. Great start on the side of Big. He can look for a second, lands that one too. He may be about to get pushed from the smoke, however. And if not, then maybe Hobbit can be able to claim his life. But it is Pavich who goes in for more entries. Just the one on this time of asking. 25 seconds left, Molly's gonna be thrown. The back of the side of the beginning. He's not <laughs> he's hiding in the smoke. And Big have done it. They will retain both orps on top of that. Not bad at all. And it definitely hurts to hear both of your Molotovs just fizzle out and then God B is just playing the edge, stopping the bomb plant. Obviously great work from Keys AWP on that round, just timing out some of that utility, getting in front of that smoke at long, for example. Hanging around, finding a second pick at mid in the washroom, so he's definitely been on point. Double op will get carried over. They never even heard Leggy is up, I don't think, so they don't even know what they're up against at B. Again, the aggression through short is going to pay out for big. This is a rifle round. They've been completely dismantled. It's all on Mo. They'll be able to turn away from the action for the time being. One of the only good things about all this team dying so quickly is he has a lot of time to work with now. Doesn't have the bomb though. Great yeah. turnaround by Big. Absolutely. Well, it's Keeve with a big individual effort with the AWP last round that really helped things along. And in this round, it just is a team effort on getting aggressive on short B. Next, playing around the edge of that smoke, taking down Hobbit to kick things off. And then from there, they just kind of piled it on. Gambit never really able to fight their way back into the round. Great work from Tamsin. And so Mo looking just to hold on to this AWP. Like he wants to take the peek onto Nex at short pipe. Nex is holding the angle. It does spot him. The bullets go off for Nex and it takes down Mo. So Mo unable to find anything with the AWP. And that will be three in a row for Big. So they are creeping up on Gambit now. Had a big lead, but once Big got their economy back in order, they have been on point and money's actually run low for Gambit. Yeah, plus keep in mind that Big have had double ups for the majority of that time, and they've only lost five players in the last three rounds, so a nice turnaround in terms of their funds, additionally. I expect that Gambit have called a tactical timeout. Trying to figure out where they're going to come down. Most already opted in for a tech nine with Kevlar, so goes to show it's likely going to be a force buy. The rest of the team seems to be following suit. Not going to be a great buy though, because Hobbit's got 5.2k, so obviously he can get an AK full kitted out. In fact, he's actually going to get the orb and drop it, so he's he's really bit the bullet there for uh, Mo. 
Yeah, forces him onto an unarmored Tech-9. So he's definitely made a huge sacrifice to ensure that Mo has an AWP in his hands and needs to make it work. Again, that incendiary doesn't hit. It allows Mo out with the AWP, but Keeve knows it didn't land as he is out there towards party and he will back off. As Mo will use this advantage to kind of start at least getting some control of the playground and making sure that there is no one playing aggressively, but Big has already withdrawn. Sneaking their way out of long. Slow once again. I have to spot the god B and he's taking up a lot of damage down to just 15. Is this the gateway oh. back in? Probably not, because Moe's just been destroyed. So, Hobbit sacrifices his Kevlar. Unless Dozier can pick up from where Mo left off, then it doesn't seem like that was a worthwhile sacrifice at all. But I'm still way out and long. Yeah, but looking like maybe they're running out of ideas a little bit here, Dust. And getting stalled out. They were really looking to get that AWP to get a pick onto the Avon site. It didn't happen. And now they have Fitch just kind of sitting over here at short B. They are out of time almost. 20 seconds left in the clock. They do want to go A. They're throwing some nades though on the B. They definitely hold people in place. And they've done just that. Both B players are still here. And even Legia has hung around with the AWP. So they've done the duty of pulling the rotate they wanted. And now they have an entry in the A bomb site. Two players are low on HP and got B. Bomb is being planted. And Hobbit's landed the one tap onto Legia. Apparently doesn't need Kevlar after all. God be with one. He's for a second. Gets that done too. And it's on Hobbit. He's got an op. He has options. But he's about to get flashed. And now the defuse comes in. And he's, he's already got the hell out yeah. of it. He realizes well, his chances in clutching a tiny. I think he was trying to sneak around and hope that he'd be able to get the op pick on the diffuser from washrooms, but just didn't get there fast enough and was forced to save the AWP. I really feel like Dozia messed that up. Like, he had the AWP, the bomb was planted, he jumps up top and tries to hit a shot on Dumpster and just misses, and it's a pixel headshot. Maybe he could have just, you know, retreated into washrooms with the AWP through long A and just set up for, you know, a diffuser later on or something like that, but tried to go for the kill up front and paid for it. But at least Gambit's still able to get a pretty good buy into this round as they were smart with their money to make sure they could afford again and that bomb plant certainly helped things along. A little bit low on utility, but they do still have the AWP in Mo's hands and AKs across the board. So far big, unable to break this double up setup. Adren and Fitch though are doing what they can and Ace already been taken. And with the smoke being placed down at Dumpster, there's not too much chance that Big are going to be able to get through here unless they just charge straight through the smoke. That's what they're going to go for. But they're both going to fall where they stand. And Legia, he's piecing the hell out of that. He's got himself an AWP. They need to drop at least one weapon, considering that Tabs and only on $150 at the time being. But that will be Gambit back into winning ways. Just a pacing change from them. I mean, they really picked up the tempo in that round. Just rolled out A almost as quickly as possible. And Adrenaline Fitch just go to work with the rifles. And Leggy, who's trying to send this op and T-Spawn, will be unable to. As you noted, there is some low money sitting out there on both Tamsin and Gobby. Particularly Tamsin, but I think there's enough money for... Keeve to drop. And Nex could actually pick up an op and drop it to Keeve. But Keeve will buy his own AWP. Nex... M4 up with armor, and Tabson will just have an eagle. To be fair, Tabson with an eagle is not a bad prospect. This time that incendiary does land, so if it just cut off, but it will fizzle away now. I feel like if there's one player on big that you want to give that eagle to, probably Tabson. I mean, Nex is very good with it as well. Yeah. Uh, Tabson's quite the beast. More centralized this time. Two players in bathrooms. We haven't seen Big do this too many of their successful rounds anyway, because they're double ops and they're playing more passive on the site. But switching things up now. Oh. Tabson 
jumped one too many times and it's cost him his life. She's going to put a lot more pressure on A. As a result, they're going to be rotating through B via connector. So Gambit, although they have the advantage right now, if they're not careful, this could get bad. Keeve on the side is going to pick up one. Oh, he, up he picks up a two for one. Three kills in as many seconds for Keeve. Getting destroyed our Gambit. And now that rotation is coming into fruition. And Hobbit with his AK is going to be the last player to fall. And it's at the hands of Keeve. Monster plays by him. He actually dropped his op to get yeah, an AK. Yeah, what in the world? Why? Um, bruh. Um, bruh. Do you just not want an AWP or... Oh. I have no understanding of why he just did that. Did he think someone was behind him to pick up the AK? I have no idea. Maybe? I mean, I'm just trying to make some kind of logical sense because he just picked up a sick round with the AWP while he dropped that, mate. Is it like his version of dropping the mic and being done with it? I, I don't... Maybe. Seems a little bit... A little bit choice, but Kabi and Tabson with the aggression are able to get the picks here over towards the fountain. Keeve was a part of that. Maybe he was just knowing he wanted to push fountain. He wanted to have a rifle to do that. We'll stop trying to speculate, I suppose, as Tabson continues to clear house in the playgrounds. Be. I was about to say he's on for the kill onto Adrent, who is easing his way up connector. Now Dozier, one on four. I mean, even if he wanted to push up through Fountain, I still feel like he <laughs> should be keeping the AWP, right? Like, We're still trying to make sense of it. That's I think, he, when you I see think, something I like that, what, it really just confuses you. I think what makes most sense is he thought that he was passing the AWP to someone who would pick it up for him inside the site while he went and grabbed an AK at long A, and there was no one in the site to grab the AWP for him. I think that's what he was thinking. Yeah, makes the most sense. Either way, didn't want it really mattering. They still win the round. He still winds up with an op for this one. So all is good in the world. Unless you gambit and you just got rinsed. Yeah, that it does hurt if you're gambit. But I mean, they've already done a fair amount of work on their T side overpass. So that is true. Even though the momentum is certainly in favor of big, there's no doubt mm -hmm. the gambit have a solid T half already. But considering at one stage it was 5-0, gambit will be disappointed they didn't make it a whole lot worse. He said they could still turn this half back in their favor convincingly. Oh, he didn't get caught. Didn't want to run. I think he was worried about someone being long and maybe sideswiping him. But in doing so, he's just got himself killed anyway. Godby needs to land this shot. And he will onto Fitch, but gets AWP down by Dozier. He's going to be looking for more. The AWP comes in to play. Leggy is going to take that round to the head. Now it's up to next. And he's going to die to the burst flag lock of Mo. What the actual hell was that round? Oh, man. You hate to see it if you're big. You've been doing so good. You've won the last couple of rounds in a row. You've won the last six out of eight. You're really piecing together a good CT side. And you lose to a P250 and some Glocks. That's a tough one. Just got overwhelmed. I think Keeve not being able to get reset with the yacht back in the A bomb site really hurt them because there was definitely a stack towards B for big. He decided to brush off the cobwebs with hyper aggression. It's good to take out Dozier, but Fitch will feast on him. 12 and 7 now, Fitch. Looking to get into connector side are the CTs to try and counteract the early aggression. Like he only has a P250. There's no kits in the hands of Big anymore. Yeah, looks like Adren will be on a solo effort at A now just to see what he can create as far as pressure to maybe hold people in place because B is the intended target as the bomb is making its way to Monster. Hobbit has already been kind of waiting there and Adren may get caught trying to shuffle through connector by God B and he does. That does hurt. But to be executed, it still could come through. It's on Hobbit. Nade and double mollies into water. No one's going to be peeking from that side for the time being. Legia just backs away, looking to get up close now with the B250. That's where it really shines. Meanwhile, Mo decapitates Tabson. 
Lucky at close range. Gonna get picked off courtesy of Hobbit. And the bomb still hasn't been planted. It's still out on the site. They know there's still a player somewhere on the CT side. But to be next from the side, there's one. Looking for the double spray now. Not going to come into play just yet. But that's all on God B. He's also gone for the flank. Flank round the side. And Hobbit... No way he expects this. Yeah, there's just absolutely no chance he thinks that God B has gone through monster side. It's going to cost him his life and the rounds. Seven apiece. But coming through into the last round, Bigger actually going to have a worse buy. They're very low on economy across the board. Yeah, that's absolutely true. They do at least get the one AWP, though. That will be made available to Kiev. Still a decent buy going to be able to come out of Gambit here. Uh, Op is going to get dropped over to Mo. There's enough money for Dozia to drop as well. So they should still be able to muster up a pretty decent arsenal for this last round of the half as it is tied up 7-all right now. So definitely a much closer affair than train which is pretty much a wash in the favor of gambit i think he was what 16 5 in the end something like that pretty one-sided regardless it's a whole lot closer next 4.1k does he go for the m4 headless kevlar and a few nades does he resort down to a UMP for extra nades? It is going to be the UMP instead. That will afford him a kit. He has $500 left. Next, please don't do this to me. This will trigger me so hard if you don't get a kit as well. How triggered? But, like, I'll be fully triggered. Tell me how much. Scale on the 10. Definitely 10. Ooh. You got the kit. Cheers, next. I appreciate that, bruv. Gambit will be coming through as well, and I believe that uh, Mo had a drop from Hobbit again. So originally I was thinking they could come straight through with full AKs, and they'd have been actually pretty solid. One, Edren probably still on a Tech 9, but instead they've dropped the AWP, meaning they're in two pistols instead of one. Now, that's putting a lot of pressure on Mo. Last time around he didn't really do the work, and this time he's not either. Keeve aggressive. Through long. They need to get the kill right here, right now. Keith should already be dead, to be honest. And how is he getting a second kill? This is ridiculous. He finally is going to bite the dust, but he's done mm. so much work in the process. Yeah, you can tell that they just didn't want to commit to chasing him down because they knew that he had reset and gotten into washrooms. They think that, oh, if we push him, he's just going to get a second kill. So you can see that they're kind of just like panic spraying, hoping that they'll re-peek into the spray. And then it just gave... Keep a chance to just kind of settle back in. Even in a high stress environment, keeping your cool there is definitely difficult. So props to Key for doing that. But yeah, it does does hurt that Gambit weren't able to trade him out. And now it's Dozy with the AWP. Hobbit with a Deagle. Two on four. They have a decent amount of time, but they're just up against a lot right now. Big have four up. They have the rifles. They're also pretty spaced apart. They can't really meet up with each other yet. As Hobbit's trying to make his way over. He has an op as well, so this is not really what you'd want to enter into a bomb site. Two ops, but it's what it'll have to do. It's all they've got. Yeah, Doji's have... just asking to die to a grenade, by the way. Like, his 18 health is screaming, please kill me with a grenade. 10 seconds. Ooh. Down goes Hobbit. And those here will follow. So Big will lead at half time. It's not a, a big lead, but considering that they were down 5-0, they'll definitely take it. But again, you just feel like Gambit have every chance at still taking this map away and 2-0 in the semi-finals. Of course, the other one was G2 versus Envious. And it did go the way of Envious, to many people's surprise. Absolutely. Went down to a 3-mapper on Cobblestone. So with that said, we have a close game on our hands here at 8-7, but Gambit did do a fair amount on their T side, and they get to come over to CT now, and they certainly aren't shabby on this side either, and Mo's been pretty on point with the AWP throughout this series, and obviously a big tool to have on your CT side overpass, particularly on the A side of the map, so 
There's still a lot for Gambit to do, but Big certainly made a, a recovery there. It was looking a little bit grim. They got just absolutely wrecked on train. They were getting bodied on this map as well, but they played their way back into it. And they actually have a round lead going into pistol, so certainly can't count them out. Mo well, playing aggressive to start things off in bathroom, trying to find out some information. I think that you get a bunch of it right now it's in the form of Glock bullets ah. flying down range into the head of Hobbit. Dozier, Adren's going to follow too. Max puts the final bullet into him, and now Mo has the horrendous task of trying to salvage the tatters of this round. Fitch is alongside it. Down on Graffiti. Mo's still resigning in heaven, not for too much longer. He's been set there from Keeve, who gets a 4k. Exceptional work by the Orpa. The USP this time is his weapon of choice, and big. That's just what they were looking for. Yeah, that'll allow them to keep carrying on. We will see the Force Buy out of Gambit, scout in the hands of Mo. And CZ sprinkled around the Deagle for Dozia. Because Mo won't have armor behind that scout. Again, do we ever come up with a name for that? It's not a glass cannon. What, what is it? What, just just a scout? Scout, no armor? I, I just call it a scout, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. I feel like we should have a name. Maybe chat can help us out with that. Yeah, it's not. This can't be a glass cannon because it's not an AWP, but it's got to be something. Go on, chat. Do your best. We'll have a look in a few moments' time. But speaking of it, Mo is uh, going to have to make it work, and it's not likely going to happen because the bulk of the big lineup is already on B site. As Adren's going to find out first hand to Leggy is Mac Ten. I'm going to get planted. And Mo scout all that remains. The ass cannon. Come on, cuz. <laughs> well, the first mistake you made was trust chat. Yeah, that's true. Never <laughs> ask for it, chat. Rule number one. Haven't heard any other good ones besides that. Glasgow. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. That is, that's exactly what that one deserves, is I got him. The Naked Scout sounds a little bit strange. Now you, you can't use the name of the gun in the, in the phrase, I feel like. That's the thing. Otherwise, <laughs> you just call it a glass op, you know what I mean? I love this guy as well. Okay. Call it Get Better Casters. <laughs> no, sound. <laughs> well done. Fair enough. I'll Fair use it as a reminder enough. every time. All right, I'm renaming my scout to that. Get yeah, Better Casters. It is a full eco in the purest sense of the term by Gambit. Full USPs, no investment found here. As a result, it's going to be a bit of a an odd round to say the least. Three players pushing up mid, other two through collector already. Nobody's beat, bomb's about to get planted. This round is going the way of big. Any kills would be a nice juicy bonus at this stage for Gambit. And it could be a massacre. And this is all money into the AWP fund as well, by the way. But Fitch is going to take that away from Keeve. And a UMP wouldn't be a bad weapon to save. It's not like they've got a Mac 10. How the hell is this happening? Tabs has also gone down. And that's a Gil Galil. These are two decent weapons to save, but next. Not gonna let them do it. That is pretty much all she wrote. Mo will be left with the USP, but not really anything to do with it, as three guns will be carried over by Big, and they will be up 11 to 7. Again, their tournament life is on the line after losing train pretty harshly, and they're doing a pretty good job of hanging around here on overpass, taking a lead, and give themselves a chance at perhaps a third map if they can keep this going, but Gambit will be onto their first real buy of the half. Will be a bit lacking, though. They don't really have a lot of utility. They don't really have an AWP. In fact, well, they don't really have an AWP. They just don't have one, for sure. That is a definite. So, it is going to make it a little bit harder on them to play their best, but we'll see what they can do. No kits either. That's another big thing to point out. Could really come back to haunt them in a retake situation. Pause. One's going to be dealt with by Leggy's Mac 10. That's a decent trade for the terrorists. Expendable weapon for uh, 
Hobbit, who is certainly a player that you're looking at to step tall and deliver. But only Lenky goes out to be by himself, so a bit of a lone wolf suicide mission for him. It's not even like you can sell a fake, because Big is so slow at this stage that Gambit know the rotation is very much a possibility. Oh, that's a big trade that's gone away from Gambit. Fitch needs to land that. It's opening up the short side of A. Now Mo needs to pull off a huge play. It's not going to happen either. Gambit. On by a thread. How? Oh. How does Nexus just flick onto a dread and get that kill? Oh dear. And those has been flashed. He will be fragged. That does hurt, man. And Dren was kind of just set up to try to see if he couldn't bail his team out of it. And then Nets hits a nasty headshot. And that was kind of like the last nail in the coffin for the round at that point. Game we're trading from behind the entire way through. Adren had a chance to change the pace, but it just didn't happen for him. And so now bigger up 12 to 7, very likely 13 to 7. So they're starting to get in a pretty dominant position. And third map becoming ever more likely as each moment passes like Big are having no trouble cleaning this one up. Fraz going out all across the board in favor of Big. Nothing coming from Gambit. To be expected, they didn't really have anything in this one. They're only going to have a couple more cracks at this before a third bat's going to get involved. And so far, Big have not stumbled a single time on the T-half. That is five rounds back-to-back. -back. Gambit, who came into this half 8-7 behind he thought there's every chance that they could just flourish and, and take this map and win the best of three, but not quite. Like he has a Mac 10 again, even though he has 12k in the bank. No one has a lack of head armor here, so this could prove to be a bit of a, a blunder by Legia. He will be occupying the short side of B. Molotov goes down. Dozier doesn't even need to extinguish it. Seemed to get blocked off the barrels for a second. It's going to be a fast B hit. More Molly's going to connect. Dozier this time he is going to use his smoke to extinguish it. Like, yes, the first one to fall. The Dren's going to change his position now. And we'll get the Molly kill actually onto God B. There was so much chaos on the site. I don't think Gobby realized that he was burning alive there, plus the flashes and smokes that are around him. Oh. Keith comes back with a kill of his own. And suddenly this is very doable. Fitch is moving into position, gets caught from the side and taps and takes him down. All on Mo. Eyes trained onto Pit with his AWP. The standout player on train. Interesting. Uh. Tats and you got the bomb, bro. Might want to plant it. I hear that's a good idea. Yeah. Is he trying to fake as though they've rotated to A? Like, I, I don't really understand why it's taking this long to plant the bomb. There's a flash. He misses his opportunity. Bomb has been planted. Thompson's going to flash in next. Keith goes down. Moves a step ahead of him. And now he's seen Tamsin's head. He's going to go in for the headshot and Mo gets the clutch. Huge plays. The Gambit have lost four players. So again, this needs to be the beginning of a marathon if they want to come back into this map. And this is just the first step of many that need to be taken for Gambit to kind of creep their way back into this one. It's been the big show. The entire half long with that 5-0 start. Almost a deja vu moment as we had Gambit with the 5-0 start in the first half as well. Well, that was uh, pretty crazy stuff for Moda went out the 1v2 in a situation where it wasn't looking too great. I mean, there was a time where Gambit were doing fine. I mean, they were up a man originally, but then Keeve and Tamsin were able to really battle things back inside that B-bomb site and get that bomb planted and have a two-on-one, but Mo was having none of it in that round. And Big, though, still onto a good buy, as you noted, Gambit in threat of being reset, and that could really dispel the end of the map for them at that point, as Mo is trying to hang around with this AWP at party. He's gonna get one, but Gabi trades it right back. It's in his face with the AK. 
No chance for him to fall back out of there. Fitch nowhere nearby is forced just to retreat to A, and Adrenaline will shuffle over to assist him. A is definitely the focus for Big. The bomb's coming up long A with three players. But that's, that's just simply put, not a good trade for Gambit. They they don't have much utility. Now the AWP is down. It's possible that the Terrace could even retrieve that. And as he said, it just puts so much pressure on A, but Adren with a timing peak. Got B was turning to the side and Tabson was caught completely unawares. Adren's going to go back in for seconds. And we'll connect. The bomb's also dropped. And although Adren's on four health, with the bomb being on long, that's going to eat up a lot of time for Gambit to be able to rotate around the back. And that's what Dozier is going for. Legia has read the situation. Dozier is up and the uh, pipes, I think, absolutely wrecked Legia because his crosshair was slightly off. Now it's down to next. He's got six health. One stray bullet and he's a dead man. He doesn't have control of the bomb. And Dozier must know that he has to plant this on A. There's no reason for him to move for the time being. Next, I think. This is going to have to make a, a rush for the A site. And here it comes. Maybe having a quick look. We'll get the plant. Dozier's allowed him to cross. That could be an issue now. And Dozier's going to get caught out by Next, who gets the spray down headshot. Ridiculous. How does Next clutch that round and how do Gambit keep slipping over themselves? I don't know, man. I feel like Dozier could have just shuffled over and watched the bomb. I mean, he was just kind of lingering around at party for so long. Gave Nick a chance to go back, grab it, run, plant safely for bank. This, I mean, and then he, I mean, he has a low HP battle in a 1v1 duel and he just misses. I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say. That's kind of crazy stuff. And now Big all of a sudden have a chance to go ahead and finish this thing off and move on to a third map. Dozier trying his damnedest to hold that off as best he can. He puts that eagle to work at Monster. That's one frag. He'll even run out and grab the AK, or Hobbit will at least. Dobby, though, fighting back. He takes down Adren at the Fountain, so it's even back up at a four-on-four. Four. Big in no great rush, no great hurry. You know they have this map in the palm of their hands. It's looking like the teams will trade each other's maps now. Tabson peering down, catches Mo. I think he had a HE in his hands. So that's him dead and buried. And unless Hobbit can pull off this 1v4 miracle, and we're going to have seven map points finding their way to big. And no money. That's really the biggest thing. Hobbit wouldn't have to come with a miracle at this point. He is flanking long A, but Keeve is going to be aware of it as he comes through the smoke. We can get early info on Hobbit. Hobbit does get the kill, sure, but now... By process of elimination, they know exactly where Hobbit can go. It's either washrooms are coming up long end of the site. Now the next even just peeks around from the back end and takes him down. So it is 15 for big. And map three is looking very likely. It would be Mirage. Unless Gambit can force an overtime here. But what, what they have to work with, you can't really see it coming. And, and how poor they've been on their CT side. I can't see them stringing together more than one round. They, they've been unable to do that so far. They just their, their CT side has been a shambles. Take nothing away from Big. They've played really well on this half, but it's just it's incredibly lackluster. The Gambit, that nade could do a bit of damage. Not quite as much as I expected, because Leggy has just ran straight past it. He's getting up close to the Mac 10. He's going to find himself a dead man, though, once that flash is cleared. Once again, it is the MAC-10 as opposed to one of the AKs, like he has done this before. It's pretty much just unleashing him and saying, get as many kills as you can. Up long, three players will move. To be fair to Gambit, they have called this spot on i'm going to be stacking four players to try and counteract the push that's about to come in keeve lands himself a kill out comes adren tabs the fall keeve in for a second 
40 seconds now, starting to push and impose their will on the site. And as Mo falls, this round likely with him, Dozier will be nailed. And Gambit will concede their choice of map. We're heading to a third. Indeed, we are. It'll take three maps once more in the semifinals here for the ESL 1 New York qualifiers for Europe. Of course, it was Envious who took it in three against G2 in the French matchup. So they're already sitting in the finals. And now it'll take Mirage to determine who will meet them. Will it be Gambit? Or will it be big? I'm Dust. With me is Vince, and we will answer that question in just a short while. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.